I see it everywhere. Get a job in cybersecurity in 90 days. Do this project that you can finish in a week and it'll be really everything you know for cybersecurity. Honestly, I feel like these set up false expectations for people. I don't really think it's possible to go from nothing to landing your first job in cybersecurity within 90 days. There are tons of new grads and people with certifications who can't land a job in 90 days. So if you are fresh and you're just interested in this career, then in this video, I'm going to show you how you can land a job, not in 90 days, but in 12 months. Now that may not seem, that may not pique your interest, but I feel like this is a more realistic timeline that you can expect. Changing your career is really difficult and you're changing basically your entire professional identity. And so that can take some time. So let's get into my 12 month plan on how to change your career into cybersecurity. So the first month is you're going to want to learn the basics of information technology. So do you know the basics of Linux and the command line? Do you know the command LS and what that does? Do you know the difference between a Linux machine and a Windows? Do you understand the file system of a Windows and Linux machine? Do you understand the architecture and how you would look for indicators of compromise in each one of these? So those are some things you probably need. You need to know about operating systems for networking. Do you know what an IP address is? Do you know how to ping a computer? Do you know what ping is? Do you understand what a router and a switch is and all of those basics? The next one is the cloud basics. So cloud is really important and you're really going to want to grasp the fundamentals of the cloud and how it works. It is a little bit complicated, but if you can learn the cloud, the cloud has probably higher demand than security does. And so if you could learn cloud security, you're going to be top. And personally, I wouldn't really get too caught up on different certs here or courses, literally chat GPT, just replace those. I would focus on building projects to show that you have knowledge in those things and actually just getting hands-on experience. And then as you go, you learn how the, what the terminology is and all of that. The second month is you're going to want to learn the basics of cybersecurity. If you are going the cloud route, like I had said previously, you're going to really want to know what identity access management is, as that is the new perimeter in a zero trust network that we're all going to. So if you can learn what IAM is, if you can learn what perimeter security is, what application security is, what governance risk and compliance is, what is endpoints, and then what is a security operation center? What does it do? What are the different functions? What is NIST CSF and how does it apply to this world of security? And I actually apply it not to know the five functions of it, right? And you can re regurgitate that information, but I actually know it. And the only way to do that is by building hands-on labs around the basics of cybersecurity. That way you're going to know it in your bones. And so when you go to read about it or take a course on it, you're gonna understand it way better and have a lot more context. Now the next month, so month three through six, you're gonna really want to explore different fields within security. So a common one where a lot of people start is a security operation center. So that is a great general place to start, but that also encompasses a lot of other different position. Maybe you do a project like application security. There are some open source projects that you can set up that are all about application security and where you can secure a web app. The easiest one to me for honestly is to set up something within the cloud and then go from there. So go to different job descriptions and try to see what skills people are really asking for here. And then really try to figure out how you can set up a lab that utilizes that, but always start again with the problem that you're trying to solve. So a lot of people just set up Splunk, right? They're like, oh, I'm qualified in Splunk, but what exactly were you doing with Splunk? How were you solving a problem? After you have played around and had a ton of fun and probably were really frustrated, the next step on your journey into cybersecurity is to create an upskill project around the specific cybersecurity skill set that you're going to want to get. 
And this is from the book called Ultra Learning. And basically he goes into saying the method is self-directed study where you're going to learn intensively and then you're going to have a strategy. So you're going to know what your targeted job is and you're going to go after that specific skill set. And then it's going to be self-directed. You're just going to learn as you go. So just in time learning. A key thing to remember is that it must not just have one skill. So people craft a lab around Splunk, but what exactly are you doing with Splunk? Why is it important in the business? That's something that you really have to think about. And then how is it interrelated into say everything else within a security operation center? Why do you have to have Splunk? Why Splunk in general? Why not another security information event manager? These are some of the things that you should think about when crafting your ultra learning project. The next months, nine through 10, you're really going to want to go hard on job hunting and strategy. You're going to want to make sure your career assets are set up and are really good. And the thing that most people do is that they rapidly put together a resume and think that the resume is going to get them a job, but behind that resume, there is no strategy. You must make sure that you have a strategy on your resume and that it's geared toward a specific targeted job. And then don't include anything that isn't relevant on that resume. The next thing is you're going to really want to make sure your LinkedIn is on point as a lot of recruiters reach out to me on LinkedIn based on my LinkedIn profile. Or say if you are looking to move to a different state or city, you can always just put your state and city in the top and then recruiters will reach out to you based on your location that you put on LinkedIn. I find this to be really effective. I was wanting to move to Pennsylvania and so I put that I lived there. And so recruiters just reaching out to me a lot for jobs within Pennsylvania. And I was actually super surprised that the jobs that they were reaching out to me pay the same amount that I would make in say the Seattle area. So keep in mind that just because a place has a lot of tech jobs, doesn't mean it's going to pay you more money than you would make in the Midwest or the South. You're going to want to make sure you network on LinkedIn. Now that doesn't mean send out 500 connection requests to random people in hopes that you're somehow going to create a network from that. No, you have to build relationships with people and you do that by over time slowly. On top of this, you only want to add people that are related to the goal that you want to get to. So that sounds harsh, but you only have a limited time and people probably do this with you. And so I suggest creating a list of 100 people that you want to build a relationship with and how it's related to that specific job that you are wanting to get or at that specific company that you're going to want to get. And then over this three to one year period, always try to engage with them and then really just make meaningful comments on their posts to build that relationship. Now don't do this in hopes of getting a job, right? But just do this in hopes in wanting to create different friends and then maybe even add value to that person's life. Don't go just straight for the ask. You have to build a relationship. It's like a bank account. Just think of these as little deposits in different bank accounts you are with different people. Another tip is that the easiest way to really get into any company is through a referral. So I know it's really tempting to spray your resume everywhere, but I would strongly suggest for every resume that you send out that you also reach out to someone at that company. It doesn't matter who, right? Just reach out to someone and then say how you're qualified. If you are interested, I also have created Upskill to Cyber. The core mission is to break through tutorial hell, endless certifications and endless one-off courses or even expensive boot camps, and help you develop real world projects that teach you the entire picture. It will help you build the confidence to become a highly effective cybersecurity professional and be imposter syndrome because I have been there. Imposter syndrome is rough. So if you're interested, I do have a link below that you can go ahead and look for and apply. If not, that is fine. I do have tons of other videos, including this how to break into cybersecurity video right here somewhere. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.